When the first man to achieve a non-standard state of awareness realized that there was no secret involved, to help shield his friends later when they asked about the experience, he said he couldn't tell them directly because it was a secret. No. <laughs> and thus were all of the little bears and piggies able to go to bed comfy, imaginarily fed and full. <laughs> Health, finances, and man's routine mental strain. One guy thought, if headaches were strokes, I'd be on Medicare. <laughs> Unrelated moral. The great thing about this kind of activity is that its inconsistency is matched only by the reliability and constriction of ordinary thinking. Once the patient was in the proper position, the mystical surgeon asked, Do you want me to grease up just my finger or my whole hand? <laughs> and that, understanding in some that struggles to be, cried out in reply, Nay, your entire body and all that you know. For time is short, and I know not how long I can lay siege to this operating room. A boy asked his father, Have you noticed that mystics never speak of an afterlife? And as you can probably imagine, the elder made a reply having something to do with the matter of blunt extreme efficiency. <laughs> A contemporary wrap-up of man's intellectual progress thus far. Men don't know squat about nothing. As always, those of you so inclined, or inclined upon, may take this as our joke for the day. When one man heard of the right brain, left brain theories, he squealed, great God Almighty, now I got double the chances. <laughs> you can laugh now. <laughs> Today's fable. In the forest once appeared an exotic colored bird who began to tell the creatures things that they'd never even thought about thinking about. And just as their interest was reaching an unprecedented pitch, a common brown bear suddenly came up and ate it. <clears throat> All the creatures were thrown into a state of disrupt panic and began screaming at the bear. Why did you do that? Why did you do it? And having no answer to such a question, the bear replied, uh, I can't tell you, it's a secret. <laughs> Moral. Moral, get the hell out of bed or it'll grow on you. Life is hiding. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is. Right out in the open. <laughs> Let's consider it. A consciousness that is dull, diffused, untethered, unfocused, jerky, lifeless, noisy, and unaware of itself. All in all, simply a consciousness which a real person finds unacceptable. Update, update, inquiry. Which is currently stronger in man, his biology or his psychology? Are there not still more drinkers than meditators? Be sure and tune in for our next update when we will be dropping a French cooking school on a Zen monastery. <laughs> for those of you interested, it originally was going to be drop a condom factory on a Zen monastery. Be sure and tune in next time when, for our update. We'll be dropping a French cooking school on a Zen monastery. For the sake of efficiency, one man began climbing up as high in the lower parts of himself as he could with the intent to leap out and eventually grab hold of and bring down gravity. The head monk told the neophytes, none of us can rest easy as long as the laws of physics still prevail. But the king and all the townsfolks but the king and all the townsfolks can, since they know that this idea is totally insane. A lad asked his father, Is it important in life to know what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Why, boy, I didn't know you couldn't see. How long have you been blind in the head? Yeah. 
One guy's motto was, why remind yourself of anything? To which I add, dig it dudes. Today's second fable. There was once some bears who said they wanted to fly. They said it, but never acted it. Moral, the end. <laughs> Seeing himself in the mirror, one man thought, you look like hell. But quickly added, but looks aren't everything. <laughs> in fact, he further thought, why would an intelligent man ever look at reflections when the real things are available? And the poor thing in the mirror just shook its head. <laughs> As she was squirming down good under the covers, Socrates' girlfriend asked, What is this big deal about knowing yourself? And the stormy stonecutter wanted to note for her the difference between travel brochures for the place and the actual disappearing act of being on the Elysian fields. But the hour was late and she had over eight plus who likes a smart ass at bedtime? <laughs> the civilized life of man. The world's largest material illusion. After experiencing an unexpected mishap, a man said, Geez, that hasn't happened to me in ten years. And his buddy said, How do you know that so exactly? I thought you didn't keep track of time. And the man replied, I don't. That's why I made it up. So I'd have something to say. <laughs> PSA. Friends don't let friends talk alone. <laughs> More of the great conspiracy politely revealed. Life produces all of the departure schedules and posts them all over the terminal to keep people from realizing they're not going anywhere. And hey, added Apollo the Hun, know something else? Every stinking part of civilization is in cahoots with it. In lieu of drinks, the co-pilot came on the intercom offering an onboard in-home correspondence course for sailors and title. How to throw your voice past the sirens or the throttling of one's own ventriloquist for prun and profit and even more fun. Meanwhile, the captain of the leaky bucket assured one and all that, in spite of the reality of the situation, everything would be all right just as long as no one thought about it. No. Moral, in a storm, bears will buy almost any story. <laughs> one man could explain anything. It didn't do him any good. He was a mystic. Two contrasting possible head conditions. Mind on the hoof, consciousness on the wing. The matter of metaphorical thought and poetic speech totally covered and completely exposed. Reality. The ultimate allegory. Yeah. Okay, for those of you who appreciate alternative possibilities, a shifted retelling of the last one. Non-literal, non-lateral speech and thought fearlessly unclothed and defined. The allegory of all allegories. Things as they are. <laughs> and to try and compensate, one man loudly proclaim, let he who is without socks throw the first shoe. <laughs> Cast the first shoe, I guess. <laughs> the mystic's one of a kind, menage a trois, is the relationship between his mind, life, and the normally unobtainable. Should debate, should debate ever end, so would evolution on this planet as worked through man. The secret is hiding. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is. Right out in the open. So one day thoughteth one man. Mysticism wouldn't seem so mysterious if there was some common term for it. And talk about your coincidences, there is. It's called being alive. 
As they climbed into bed, Moses' girlfriend said, Do you know that you talk in your sleep? And he did, which was one of the reasons he resisted the condition. <laughs> and yet another difference, if there be any, between the would-be mystics and the real thing is that when they talk about the awakening, the would be want you to like them, while those who actually know what they're talking about want only for you to understand what they say and use it. The awakening is hiding. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is. Right out in the open. And you are the open. Uh, back to my little story, my example of using belligerents. People who were, to make it a bit more interesting, and since there are, as always, contemporary examples extant, groups of people who were, not that long ago, neighbors, parts of the same city-state, part of the same label tribe or group of people who are currently killing one another, and if they were questioned, they would say that they indeed wish to stop the belligerency. They stop the bloodshed, and then they don't. Do you begin to see that that is the perfect example of what stands between a man's ordinary state and any possible extraordinary state of consciousness? That there it is? I can make up more examples, I can pull out examples, or I can make up fables. But you understand the very thing that people cannot talk about, the very thing that cannot be seen, that cannot be said by ordinary minds, is right there. With my great drugstore mystical ability, I sense that my <laughs> examples over the last few times regarding the inability of otherwise sane people who will <laughs> insist that people engage in some bloodletting conflict after giving all their excuses and reasons if asked directly would all say that they wish to stop they see no profit in it they do not enjoy it and indeed hurts them and then you're left with why don't you and under all ordinary guises when I say you're left with if you are on the same conscious level as they are, you're left with being a social critic. You're left with denouncing humanity, or at least that group, as being crazy, stupid, nuts, the whole world's going to hell, what's wrong with these people? And you find your ordinary mind would find examples. Uh, proper names is a better description once you begin to understand the workings of language into this equation, which I'm going to try and drag out for you in a minute, but once you understand, it'd be better to even say, for me to say that instead of pulling out examples, you pull out proper names. You begin to distract yourself over the fact they can't stop. They say they want to, they look you dead in the eye, and they say, yes, it breaks my heart, we are sick of it, we want to stop. <clears throat> and your question is, whether you present it verbally or not, that at least in your mind, sitting back looking at it as an observer, you think, well, so why don't you? You admit, you admit that it's, you do not like it, you admit that you personally want to stop it, you admit that it is breaking your heart, so why don't you stop? What they cannot say is where we left it sort of last time, assuming this was in a sort of sequential adventure, that's our second joke for the night, assuming this was our a sequential adventure, that people cannot say, the ordinary man cannot say why they cannot do it, why they don't stop. And the reason they don't stop is they can't stop. But then the ordinary mind would say, well, you know, what's after that? What the hell you want after that? Yeah. Of course, the ordinary mind's not going to find that funny. But if I had ordinary mind staying up on top of the Empire State Building or Sears Trade Towers, at least you think that we overlooked the great Midwest, and we had ordinary minds up there, and I said, jump off and fly. And of course, these minds are attached to human bodies. And I say, jump off and fly. And they don't. 
again, assuming they're sane. As sane as the people who say they want to stop the bloodshed in which they're involved. Why don't they jump off and fly? They don't even have to answer that. That's stupid. They don't even bother to answer. If I say, well, why don't you do it? We know why they don't. Because they can't. And when you can't do something, something as blatantly impossible as that, you don't even bother to say it. They would just turn around and sort of look at me like, you know, that I must be crazy. They'd probably won't get very far away from the, especially the combination of the edge of the building and someone like me. I mean, that, that does not bode well as a good mixture. But they would not, in any serious manner, think about yourself. Bother to answer. If you were staying up there on the observation tower and the Eiffel, the observation platform in the Eiffel Tower, and somebody walked up to you and says, "Hey, why don't you jump off and fly?" I bet you, I bet you won't. I bet you won't do it. I mean, what have they said? But well, if they looked at you, why don't you? And you, you know, I beg your pardon, or parlez-vous français, or whatever you say in Spanish. And they said, "Why don't you jump off and fly?" If you thought that they thought they were serious and you were a sane person, think about it. You wouldn't even bother to give it an answer. You do not answer. You don't even bother to respond to a question of why don't you do the impossible. You don't do the impossible because it's impossible. But when it gets into the area, to the level I'm trying to describe now, the mind will not answer. Because it becomes, well, I'll bring out so that you don't feel too strung out. When debate, if should debate ever cease, then all progress as worked through man on this planet would cease. I looked at, uh, that sounds too theoretical, civilization would cease. The intellectual life of man, this is all synonymous, but it would cease. If debate stopped, it must be endless. And to be endless, by its own definition, there can be no conclusions. Conclusions uh, are extinction. Men do not discuss specifically the same things over and over throughout the ages. But if some specific example of a subject under discussion, under a great debate, some question of morality, some question of the arts, of culture, whatever, politics, that must be worked out, if it indeed gets worked out, that is, the debate in some area seems to cease, it simply disappears. It's not as though something were accomplished. The sides involved with the debate, uh, it may be good for, I was going to say 30 seconds, but nowadays with the great photo ops, they might drag it out to 30 minutes of congratulating each other. We're glad we worked this out, glad this worked this out. This is a grand achievement. Do you realize we've been debating this subject, us Group X here and Group Y, our political philosophers, we've been debating this now for how long? And the guy said, well, down there, two decades. And they shake hands again, get more photographs like, oh, now we've worked it out. After that photo op, there is no real accomplishment because why have they worked out? All that happens is it disappears. You understand? It's not the same thing as saying, it's not a perfect comparison, but it's not the same thing as being able to cure broken legs. That in some way they finally come up with a pill, and if you take it, you'll never break your leg. You like that? That's better than cancer, see? Cancer's too easy. Cure broken legs. That would seem to accomplish something. And it would be remembered for many years. Okay, many months. Because every time a skier would fall down, every time a kid would fall down the stairs, every time a man under the influence of a heavy alcoholic load, but enough to still be conscious, would trip and fall down the stairs, they would get up and sort of think, boy, I'm glad they found that pill. My leg should be broken, but it's not. <laughs> if it is a non-physical, if it is the cessation of a debate over some human subject that is not over territory, not over food, it is over intellectual subjects. They are never concluded, but if they are, it is not a form of success. All it is is they became dinosaurs. They're forgotten. Now back to where we were. Some, sometimes a show and tell, physical, theatric, sometimes I notice helps a lot in a heavy philosophical discussion. Well, it does. Um, during halftime on the, covering the NFL, when the guys discuss things, I notice a lot. That's what I thought would help in this case. But maybe not. I hate to overdo it. 
They cannot say the obvious. They cannot say that which is point blank. As you ask the people, why, why don't you stop? You say you want to. Both of you say you want to stop. Why don't you? If there was a truthful validity to ordinary reality, then they would say, they would answer the question. Why don't you stop? We've discussed this. We've debated it. You have both said that you would do anything to stop. Now, I've gone back and forth trying to mediate this. I've discussed it with you. And you've signed peace street after peace treaty. You've made pledges. And they're all going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say you want to stop. You say again today, yes. And you're still out there fighting, yes. Well, just tell me this. Why don't you stop? The answer, we can't. <laughs> Period. <laughs> that cannot be done in life. But then, if that is even pointed out, and an ordinary mind would entertain it that far, they would then want to bring in proper names. They would then want to explain what the people meant. Well, they didn't mean that they couldn't actually stop. I mean, that's not it. Because any reasonable person knows that they can stop. I mean, it's not that they can't. All they got to do is stop, right? I mean, they, they don't shoot their pistols. They, don't, they no longer fire up those kerosene howitzers. Parts of the world are still behind. <laughs> they simply lay down their hand grenades. They lay down their arms. They no longer shoot. What the hell are you talking about? They can't. We are right at the line that divide that, that stops ordinary minds from another state of consciousness, literally. This is just a prime example. They don't come any better. Yeah, but they don't come any worse. I mean, that's what really makes it so mediocre. Okay, so great and so lousy. Because that is it. That is why the ordinary mind cannot even hear what the awakening is about. It cannot hear another state of awareness. You could describe it until cows apply for positions now open in your local fire department. I'm sorry I brought that up because I can imagine now <laughs> lawyers somewhere drawing up potential lawsuits. <laughs> Get those bovines in uniform and on those trucks. All right. But well, just think, if the water runs out, at least the fireman got something cool and refreshing to drink. Of course, then I'm imagining a, a cow climbing up a ladder to save somebody, and the chief sends you up behind the cow. Like, go help. No, I don't listen. I don't guess we should pursue that either. The answer, the answer to all the questions of humanity, by the way, I'm sure some of you can plug in, is what I'm using now, is you've taken these same people that by all other aspects other than they're being involved with this uncivilized bloodletting, by every other definition, they're sane, and they even sit and sanely tell you, we want to stop. And they do not stop. They do not stop. And the question as I was pointing out to you last time, which it should be of some hint to you. I said last time of some interest. It should have been a hint. People do not even, other sane people, do not even ask the question. They don't ever say, well, why don't you? Now, I know if you listen and read the news, or they talk all around the edges. And it's not just verbally, because they're, they're not trying to pirouette around the truth verbally, because they wouldn't know it if they fell into it and stepped on it, what I'm talking about. But even if you listen, you realize they're not actually turning to the parties involved with the conflict and going, well, you both say you won't stop. And, you know, so what's stopping you? Why don't you? You say you want to. That is not the question that's asked. Even if it's put that way verbally, it will not just stop there and float out like the lingering restraints of a Mozart and Sonata. You cannot just ask somebody, Accidentally, life does not allow a reporter, for instance, to go through with this peace mediator, to go through what I've gone through, and then to say, so you both won't stop. Well, why don't you?
I assume I don't have to go any further with that to show, but do you realize if that indeed just happened verbally on TV, let's say that you're watching it, this horrible conflict, and everyone knows it's horrible, and they both say we won't stop, and suddenly this mediator you know, from the UN or somebody, he says, well, why don't you? And the camera stays there, and everything just kind of freezes. The two guys are sitting here, the heads of these two warring factions, dressed up, appeared to be civilized, literate people, gone through all this that I keep replaying for the last few nights, and find this guy in the middle just goes, well, why don't you? And the camera just stays there, what I did. Just think. I'm just doing little parts of both parties, perhaps, now. No great theatrics, not even going on and start doing cartoon stuff. He just, the head guys, let's assume the mediators thing here and these two opposing, the heads of the two opposing factions that have agreed, yes, we'd do anything. It's, we can't stand the thought of what we're doing to one another. And the guy in the middle says, so why don't you stop? And there they all three stand and the camera just stays there and it's silence in the background. Without any explanation, you just simply know any reasonable person that would listen to this, an ordinary mind, they just know that is never going to happen. That is never, it's just not going to happen. And again, it should be some sort of hint, if not interest at least. But isn't that weird? That is the obvious question. It's the only question. It's, well, why don't you? And those of you... Also, you know, it doesn't have to be two opposing factions or two countries. It can be a single person talking about some sort of behavior in which they're involved that's self-destructive. And by all other attempts, other than the fact that they have to wash their hands, let's say, 14,000 times a day, and they can't keep a job, they can't keep up a marriage, much less a sexual relationship, you know, <laughs> unless they're, you know, laying speedy Gonzales, I guess. It's running their whole life, and you go, and by, but by every other account, they're sane. And just as normal as can be, and you go, and you understand this is killing you. And don't, don't try to weasel out. I know it's considered that those kind of phobias are really some kind of deep psychological, et cetera. Kleptomania. Uh, think about anything that nowadays people say helps cripple them psychologically. And if you finally you listen to it all, and by every other account they're saying, and you're saying you realize this is doing you no good, yes, and it serves no purpose, yes, and you do understand beyond that, it is running your life. Oh, yes. That means there's no doubt, yes. Why don't you stop? See, the reason I didn't use that is nowadays it is fairly easy because they want to say, well, they are want to say, something on the verge of, well, I can't, but it's always, but I can't, but it's not, well, I can't. Does anybody know where I'm going with all this, what I'm pointing at? It's not all just stop and go, me back up and seem like I've gone down another street. It's all the same thing. But you understand, that was just a harder one, or that is easier, according to how you look at it. If I'd start off with that instead of these two warring factions, nowadays that is almost immediately dismissible. Instead of my peace mediator from the UN, my disinterested, uninterested third party, between these two warring factions, getting them both to say, or them both, just, yes, we won't stop. And he finally says, well, why don't you? As though that were you watching on TV and that was an interview. You know that's not going to happen. You just, it's not. The same way, what if you had a person there, for whatever reason, and somebody interviewing them on some you know, TV show, whatever the purpose was, it's somebody... And they're discussing this guy was, uh, had a great life and everything was going well and he started engaging some sort of self-destructive behavior. He's wrecking everything. But th it's already known. I'm just using him as a kind of personalized example of this collective conflict between peoples, this larger scale. But they're asking him, by every other observation they make and everything that they can speak to him about and interview him, and let's assume again it's on TV so that you're looking at me and I'm the camera and the guy's interviewing him, Maybe a psychiatrist or a reporter. Somebody say, would, 
you do realize this is ruining your life. This is destroying you. He goes, oh, yes. Well, there's no, yes. And you, go, and you understand it. Yes. And you understand that it's serving no purpose, that no one else does this. All sane people would consider that this is just unthinkable behavior. Yes, I know that. And would you want to stop? Are you wanting to kill yourself? No. Well, why don't you stop? You know you'll never see that. Because if it went that far, if they say, why don't you stop? It may take the guy a couple of seconds. And, but you know he's going to answer. You know damn well he's going to answer. That is a nice place. It's easy. We're sort of completing a cycle here in the Western world, circa 1994, uh, that it's... Uh, picking up a bit of steam of bouncing back on the kind of psychological uh, ex psychological accepted excuses for behavior. Mm -hmm. It always just goes round and round. If it wasn't religious, it would be psychological and then back to religious. <coughs> that is, of trying to dismiss some of this, that everyone's trying to excuse their behavior because it's somebody else's fault. It's your mother's fault. It's your father's fault. It's somebody's fault. And yet... You're not going to hear what I just did. But I'm saying, well, hey, somebody asked this individual, well, why don't you stop? <laughs> there will be an answer. There's got to be an answer. And then it's easy. The reason I brought up the, some of the growing criticism of that. Because it is easy. Then the person will say, when I was a child, and you know what's going to come after that, <laughs> or 10 years ago, there's going to be something he is going to say, why he does not stop? Why don't you stop? He will not say the same as my larger scale combatants. Will not say, I can't. Except at the individual level, the reason I was pointing out that I didn't use it initially, is they can, an ordinary person can almost say the first part of the sentence. Mm -hmm. They can say, well, you know, it's easy for you to say, why don't I? I'm going to tell you the truth. I've admit I want to, but before you say, why don't I? I'm going to tell you. I don't because I can't. Mm -hmm. This is not just a hobby. Blah, 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 blah. This is not just something that happened to me yesterday. He will not say, I can't. Contrary, you know, down a side street, off of a side street, if somebody apparently was sane enough to get this far, an interviewer or a psychiatrist said, well, why don't you? And he says, I can't. And didn't say anything else. That would place him outside the realm of being even ordinary. They would decide, then, well, this man is psychotic. <laughs> Do you understand? He's not just a little upset. He's not got just a problem that we might deal with through analysis over a period of time. I mean, if the psychiatrist waited... And you don't have to be a professional. It could be an observer. It could be a reporter. It could be you watching it done. And you ask this guy that apparently was sane up to that point, but is engaging in this one form of behavior that's self-destructive, and he looks you dead in the camera, dead in the eye, dead in the brain, and says, yes, I do want to stop. And you say, well, why don't you? And he says, I can't. And the psychiatrist, the collective intelligence of ordinary man, you sing at home listening on the couch. You, if it goes far enough, he goes, I can't. And the camera stays there. <laughs> now, does everybody listen to it? Yeah, well, why? And if he doesn't say anything else, he would be dismissed. Hmm. As not just neurotic, because his behavior, you understand the difference? That is, he would not just be assumed that he is an otherwise sane man with a small problem. Uh-uh, this man got serious problem. <laughs> He would, he would be immediately, within a few, if he went 30 seconds to a psychiatrist, to a camera, to a psychiatrist at home watching this. And he sees this guy, and the guy's talking about the behavior he did, he says, you know, compulsive hand washing or kleptomania or some little something. And the psychiatrist is watching it, and he says, well, and the reporter says, well, why don't you stop? And he says, I can't.
And if they let it go on like that, and there was a psychiatrist even sitting at home, and the psychiatrist up to then, if we'd ask him, he said, well, you know, that does seem strange, but people do have those kind of neuroses in life. You know, it's not that strange for a man, even a professional man, to have some sort of little something. <laughs> that those kind of little neuroses are just part of being, living out of the stress of ordinary civilized affairs. That's the psychiatrist seeing, watching this on TV. But if that guy stands there that says, when they say, why don't you stop? And he says, I can't. And the psychiatrist watches it. That goes on about that long. It will switch in his mind. I'm just using his as an example. It will switch from this guy having a neurosis to having a psychosis. In other words, the man is not just an ordinary guy with ordinary problems. The guy's psychotic. Yeah. Because ordinary people, I mean, it's pointed out their sins. I'm sorry, they're psychological problems. No. When it's pointed out to them, their self-destructive behavior, some, some form of self-destructive behavior, and they go, yes, I'm aware of it. Well, of course, after that, you've got to ask, like, wouldn't you like to stop? Because they're aware of it and don't want to stop then they're, of course, again sick. They're not mainstream. But everybody, you can still qualify as being ordinary as far as life is concerned. You can be a drunk. You can be a dope addict. You can be almost anything if, when asked, would you like to stop? And you go, yes. <laughs> then you are more or less acceptable. <laughs> That's one way life, I would suggest to you, is set up these things like the AA and these support groups. is like a test to see if you, even though you are a drunk, that you are still redeemable. You're still worthwhile to life in the mainstream just to see if you'll show up, which is the old joke amongst us Baptist psychiatrists. There's a benefit of just being a drunk as opposed to being a member of AA or being an alcoholic. Is if you're just a drunk, you don't have to attend those goddamn meetings. But see, if you don't attend the meetings, then you're not saying that you won't stop to get back on the main side street. As long as you can be engaged in behavior that seems to be somewhere between self-destructive and at least problematic. But as long as you will say, as long as life can turn on you through some guys, through a preacher, your mother, your wife, or somebody say, don't you think you drink too much or eat too much? Or don't you think you spend too much time at that nudie bar or whatever? And you go, yeah, yeah, I do. That, by and large, if everything else is more or less on all fours, that you're still a middle-class neighborhood person, then you can engage in behavior that is <laughs> prima facie without any particular value that doesn't seem to be of any nourishment. But as long as you'll say, yeah, you're right, then that, you know, I'll let it go. People go, okay. But you understand that that is the same thing as answering the question by saying, well, I can't. Because, but see, that'd be the difference between an alcoholic. Here we go. All right, let's all grab those similes and pull those mothers till they break. Okay, here we go. That's like the difference between alcoholics and drunks, I was trying to tell you. It would be the difference between somebody who engaged, some otherwise apparently sane middle class person engaged in certain little behavior that seems unprofitable. And you say, well, you're right. And they go, yeah. And they say, well, don't you want to stop? They go, screw you. No, I don't want to stop. Or just watch the two. Which, you know, they are no longer an ordinary person with a neurosis. They're psychotic, and life knows it. That's like the drunk saying, you know, well, don't you think you have an alcoholic problem? Good drunks go, I don't have any problem. I, you know, I get drunk, I fall down. No problem I ever have is getting enough to drink. Would you like to attend a meeting? What do you have to drink? Well, nothing? Yeah, right. I'll be, you know, you know put me down. I'll be right over. You understand? You are then almost beyond redemption. You are outside the mainstream of life. Not because, although it would fit into ordinary, to man's definitions of being mainstream, it's life that decides, well, if you do not, if you're not suffering over, if you will not verbally recant what you're doing and say that you want to change or to stop, then you're not really playing the game right. You're not really part of the mainstream of my systemic body on this planet vis-a-vis -vis humans. So you do not hear the question, really, of a reporter. You understand I'm using all this strictly allegorically. It doesn't have to be a reporter. It could be two people talking, but it just seems to 
expose one to a greater possibility of examples and ramifications. The report is asking these people, or the report is covering the peace mediator between these two warring factions are one reporter is interviewing this one man who has a neurosis, who has a problem, has a behavior that is self-destructive. In either case, they ask the parties or they ask the guy, well, would you not like to, do you see it as being destructive to you and everyone involved? Yes, say both countries and say this guy. Then the mediator or the reporter or the psychiatrist, it's all the same, says, well, would you like to stop? Yes, say both countries. Yes, says the guy. Yes, I want to stop. Then he says, well, why don't you? That question's never asked, understand. The question's never asked. Of course, there's a reason for that. Life's efficient, if nothing else. It's not going to have somebody ask the question because they ain't going to let anybody answer it. So there you are. Why ask the question? But notice no one ever says, well, why don't you? Not like that. And if they did, if they said, well, why don't you? Which would be a fair question. The countries normally say nothing. If the cameras stayed on them, that is, somebody's attention stayed on them, somebody's, they will finally answer. But it's just back on the merry-go-round. You know that. Mm -hmm. If the mediator, now take the mediator and the camera, you got to take all this as being consciousness. And plus, those of you getting good, take it all inside of you. And it's you doing all this to you because you've got the warring factions. You don't have to worry about the Serbs and the Croats. You don't have to worry about a guy with kleptomania out there. It's all in here. And so, but back to the example, as though it were an external example. If the mediator and a reporter, a camera, and they all, all involved, the, two, the prime ministers of the two warring factions know their own camera, live on CNN, beamed around the world, and the media says, so you, you want to stop, you see it's destructive. Yes, it's inhumane. Yes, we agree. And you want to stop? Yes. And the camera hits them both. He said, you want to stop? Yes. And you will? Yes. And he says, why don't you? If, which it wouldn't, as you know. But if, then the camera just stayed there and it pulled back maybe and it got all three parties. Or maybe it superimposed or how they do it, split the screen and put the two factions over here, the heads of them up there on the screen together, split. And it just stays on them. Camera doesn't move. No one comments. It says, why don't you? And they know the camera's on them. Read consciousness if you're doing it to yourself. <laughs> and they keep looking up and the red light's on, the camera's not moving. And they each glance at each other out of the corner of their eye and the other one's not doing anything. The mediator, you'd normally expect the mediator to break in and go, well, wait a minute, I, that's not the right way. I shouldn't put the, let me rephrase the question. <laughs> Something should happen. Break for a commercial. But no, here's my version. He says, so why don't you? And here it is, split screen and the heads of the two guys. If it stayed like that, you do know that couldn't last over 10 or 15 seconds. And finally, they'd be back on the merry-go-round. Nothing would happen. One of them go, well, we tried, but, you know, that last time when we signed that treaty, they came over and started. And before he got his mouth, they got, wait a minute, we didn't start. I, you might last treat it and you shot that little girl across. And if the camera went back to the mediator, read just sort of objective intelligence. Yeah. If he did any, well, of course, the UN guy's been trained better than that. Life picks out the right people. Yeah. But I'm giving you a good version. He would go, now here we go again is the point. But that would let them out of it. Then they could break for commercial. They could do anything. But what you're not going to see, what does not happen out there, and what does not happen in an ordinary man's consciousness is what we're talking about. You know damn well I'm not talking about politics and warfare. It's in here, as you can't do it. You cannot reconcile the two. You can even bring it to the point of making those two warring factions look at each other, and you say, why don't you do so-and-so? Why don't you wake up? Why don't you act more consciously? Why don't you quit being stupid? You both admit you're stupid, yeah? Well, why don't you stop it? You can't let it go with that. If you could, you'd be awake, because there's the difference. But there it is. The commentator, the peace mediator says, well, why don't you stop? And the camera just stays on them. Read consciousness again. Controlled consciousness in one man, but back to the easy version. The camera stays on both parties. You know damn well if this happened, this wouldn't. But if it went this far, the camera just stays on them. And it's just hanging there. The last words. Everybody still hears it. Even everybody at home. Well, why don't you?
Well, we wanted to, and then he started that. Yeah, yeah, but they were the one that... And then you're out of it. It doesn't explain a damn thing. You're right back where you started. Anybody with an iota of intelligence, even an ordinary person with intelligence. <laughs> Third joke of the night. <laughs> even an ordinary person goes, or should go, wait a minute. The UN, and I help contribute. Into, you know, not voluntarily, but I help pay for this crap. They spent six months over there. They got a whole down, they've been doing this down peace thing. And here it is, they thought they'd brought it up to some good, you know, the, the mediator called this worldwide press conference. Got CNN to carry it live like we're getting somewhere. And look at those clowns. They're about going, well, he started it first. They've been shooting at us again. Good God in heaven. People are nuts. Jesus. You understand? Then nobody's left sitting there at home going, the parties involved are not sitting there left with the question of, well, why don't you? The question is, why don't you change? Well, hell, I wanted to, but my stomach made me. I wanted to, but my... Or back to the individual, the reporter, the psychiatrist, a man's own controlled consciousness, a man's would-be more awakened awareness, turns on himself. You keep doing this, you keep engaging in this behavior that's getting us nowhere. Unprofitable, this neurotic behavior, yes? And you know it is, yes? Well, do you want to stop? Well, sure I want to stop. Well, why don't you? And he knows the camera's still on him. Well, you don't know how my father treated me. You understand that? Well, my father shot at me first. There has to be, and you, everybody surely understands, I'm not talking about power plays in politics. I'm not talking about interfamily relationships. I'm talking about that human consciousness cannot be held up and float with a microphone, read consciousness of the camera going, why don't you change? And it knows it can't. At the end, when you're trying to wrap up, I've <coughs> good gestures help, and if you raise your voice, <coughs> the ordinary consciousness, the heads of these two countries, you do know this. They can't even say we can't. The individual. The question is, why don't you stop the self-destructive behavior when you say that you're aware of it and want to? Why don't you? The individual, under those kind of conditions, can come a bit closer <coughs> of no importance, but it can be more socially acceptable to respond with the beginning of an answer of, well, they're in essence saying I can't, but it's I can't, comma. You understand? It's, well... And they normally won't even respond like that. It's like, well, that's easy for you to ask. Yeah. You know, I've asked myself, well, why don't you? And then I realize, well, I can't just decide. See, they worked it in. Did you hear me? They can say, well, mm -hmm. I decided it's not, you know, that I can't just today decide I'll quit doing it. They worked in the words in the sentence. I can't. But it goes by like the silver streak. <laughs> Nobody hears that. Oh, you're not supposed to. But the one thing the man cannot do, that the people cannot do, <coughs> on a larger level, the uh, collective, like political level, they can't even say, we can't. That is just not acceptable. You can't ask the church. You can't ask some major religion. You can't ask any human institution. You can't ask Harvard. You can't ask the government, which is the same thing as the, these heads of state I was saying. You cannot ask the church. You cannot say, well, why is it that the whole world has changed their attitude about uh, se certain sexual mores and etc.? And why don't you, you realize that people are deserting the church and they say it specifically because of that. Nobody believes that anymore. Why don't you change? They can't say. We can't. They can't ask the question. The institution, which is a collective version of an individual person, they can't say we can't because they cannot face that. It is self-destructive. It is no answer. So they can't, I just want you to understand, it's not just political. No human institution. That's civilization. Should debate stop? Should discussion stop? But debates, I like them short and sweet. That's why I start talking. I flesh it up a bit for you. But as soon as we leave, you should take the mystical Jack Lane approach and <laughs> cut it back down. It doesn't need any fat. 
The fat is saying, well, yeah, I won't stop, but I can't because my mother. That's fat. God, that is obese to a mystic. I could count the words and, well, I, well, I can't because of my father, ellipsis, which is seven or eight words. And you could say, well, we could cut out, you know, because of my father. Yeah, but get real good and you cut out the whole damn thing. Well, I thought you were going to say, I can't because of my father, and because of my father is the part that should be cut. Yeah, to start with. <laughs> but remember that mystic, or a guy who heard somebody say, don't forget, in this great effort, a trip all the way to China, to Shangri-La, if you like that better, is made one step at a time. And the guy calculated right quick the distance <laughs> and thought, hey, one step at a time. If I'm going to get there one step at a time, yeah, I should live so long. So, you could think, well, cut out the because of my father. Yeah, okay. That's good. I'll give you credit. You get one star next to your name. You don't have to come to Sunday school next Sunday. But after that, forget it. Cut out the whole damn thing because there is no answer. But the individual cannot say, when, when you ask, well, why don't you stop? He cannot say, I can't. And stop there. Because that would be as self-destructive, that would be as uninformative, as unenlightening to him as it is these large groups of people just sitting there and staring. <laughs> or self-destructive, let's back up one more step in the sequence of somebody even asking the question objectively. Well, uh, I've listened to all your stories and both of you say you want to stop. Both of you say that you are sickened by what's taking place and your participation. So may I ask you this? Why don't you stop? That can't be asked. I mean, it's a waste of time. Debate. Should the debate stop, civilization, the way I put it to you originally tonight, was should the debate stop, evolution on this planet would cease as work through man. That is, talk goes nowhere. <laughs> so this gets real tricky because I can get people, I get ordinary minds go, yeah, you're right. But they think that's a criticism. Yeah. You remember the opening item from the last time we met that said, whenever... The, the title should have been, which I threw in later as a kind of a joke, is, anyway, when the simple hear shots, they assume that they're aimed at somebody. <laughs> and I point out that the title of that should have been, or could have been, Why It Is So. Jesus Christ, help us all, God, and Buddha, crawl under the bed and run for your life. <laughs> Difficult to talk about this to anybody, <laughs> much less ordinary anybody's. Because when the simple hear shots, which are boom, boom, you hear it off, you assume. And it's almost impossible to get them to think otherwise. It just doesn't compute. You hear shots being fired, and just they assume they're aimed at somebody. Which is one of the running difficulties I pointed out in trying to talk about this and throughout the ages. And somebody I sure would slip up to Buddha or Moses or Confucius and say, by the way, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I know you've been on that cable TV show or the PBS. They, you know, they don't want to take sides. But I, I know what you've got. But, you know, I know the political groups or religious groups or other nationalities or races. Or I know, I know what you're really getting at. I know who you're shooting at. But I, I understand you just won't come out and say it. And you can't talk to anybody after that. You can't debate them. Someone with a mystical turn of mind, someone who understands what's going on. You cannot debate. May I be blunt with you? You cannot debate squat. If you want to debate simple squat with simple people, like, do you think that the Redskins have any chance again in this decade? You know, do you think they'll ever solve the hockey strike? Their own strike? Oh. You, know, you might be able to debate that. But if you want to debate anything beyond that, that which is approaching the transcendental, you can't debate it. Are we out? Two minutes. If the debate stops, evolution stops, through man, literally, the idea that anything can be explained away, that there is an answer to anything, is not just silly. Silly is a silly word. Yeah. <laughs> To believe that, the, that there is a redundancy, that there is a recycling, that there is a cannibalism, that there is an impasse, that there is an open-ended cul-de-sac, that there is a running 
out of control little steam engine in the life of man up here. It goes round and round. We don't get anywhere. We talk about peace. Let's have peace. Let's have peace. All right. And everybody agrees. Let's have peace. And they sign all the things. And somebody says, how about the group that didn't sign? So they have to add, we'll, we'll declare war on them. And you go, there they are again. What stupid people. There is no end to the bait. The end of the debate does not accomplish anything at the ordinary level. Ordinary minds will never see that. I know this gets tricky, but <laughs> too late to worry about it now, isn't it? You mean it's too late tonight because the tape's running out? Or do you mean it's too late in my life? Exactly. exactly. I couldn't have put it better. Ordinary minds cannot see that there is no answer to be had. None. That's not the point of human conversation. That's the, not the point of civilization. And what really can't be seen is trying to be more conscious and think, well, there's, I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. That's what's saying between, is you can't say, well, why don't you? You can't say that and then consciously not answer, I can't. Mm -hmm. But that would have been the first step. We're out? Okay. <laughs> One second, I just got to... We're on. You on? It was just a little message for you people. And I want you guys out of town to hear it. Uh, you heard what I told them a few weeks back that they had up until the middle of March to double the size of the people meeting here that, and have them pre-sold. I was going to stop, just close down here in Atlanta. Maybe everything, but at least close down here. And you people out of town, I've already received notes, you people who've seen it, and I know you had some concern because it would affect the Jew and et cetera. I want to tell, I was going to tell Worth, he was sort of the... Uh, Rules, walking rules of Roberts, Roberts of Rules, Robert Swartz, thank you, kind of the ad hoc chairman of running it down here, I thought, but anyway, it goes for everybody, and you people out of town, would you know this, because not just now, it's happened all the time, and you people out of town, I know that some of you make fourth joke of the night, <laughs> some kind of efforts to pick up new people in the other cities, and I know that everybody runs across the same sort of situation. Colon. <laughs> Dice. New paragraph. Take your choice. And that is, I do not want anybody. It's seriously, and it, you people out of town, this sounds like I'm talking more to them because they're the ones involved, so, but the rest of you, I want you to hear it or I wouldn't put it here on tape. I wasn't going to say anything else, and I'm not keeping track of worth. I don't know anything that's going on. I don't even care to know. I threw it on you, but there is one thing. Uh, do not try and convert anybody. Do not try and talk anybody into it. And do not debate anybody. Mm -hmm. To begin with, if you've got any sense, you know that you can't do any of it. <laughs> but especially don't, especially don't do the third. And I know you get tempted. But uh, I know that people have seen something I wrote, seen a tape, done something. And then maybe sit and listen to the whole tape. And they just make up a scenario. And, then, huh. and you go, well... Would you like to, we meet here every Thursday or every Saturday? Would you like to meet us? We'll come and join us? The person well, I, don't, I don't think so. Or, that is, they just want to get away. And if they do, you certainly, well, in either case, you've got no business. I don't want you to. I forbid you to, to make one step after them. To go, oh, wait a minute. Nuh-uh. Never. Never, 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 never. But what's a little more captious is the person goes, well, I listened to it, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's listen. I don't and they won't start arguing. They can call it discuss it. <laughs> Don't. Just don't. About all you can do is however you guys are going to do it is like invite somebody to come look at the tapes, I guess. And if they stand up and walk out, that's it. And the damage is to you is why I'm telling you not to do it. I mean, it's useless to start with, but I want you to fall into it and think, well, I've got to. Or they, they look like they had some hope because they said at least they wanted to debate it. There's nothing to fucking debate. Mm -hmm. And it is extremely, some of you know this as soon as I say it, it is extremely poisonous to a potentially more conscious person to debate it. I'm, I mean in any way. Or for somebody to say, wait a minute, I like some of what he said, but I think he's crazy. Or I think he got some of this, he twisted. If, and you may think, wait a minute, I know him and you can't talk about him that way. Sure they can. <laughs> don't you ever take up for me. Don't ever say a word. Don't take up for this. You can't. But do not debate it. Okay, well, that's, that's right. Arguing with me and debate about it. And you know, then it's like, dot, 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 dot. What'd I do? I know, I know. If they run from me, as I said, I, it's fairly easy. Because you've got to put forth at least physical effort. Probably walk after them, and many people won't even pursue that, but you shouldn't. 
This is also on a wider scale, if you can see it, or a more narrow scale. The same thing is the refusal of the mystical figures of the Socrates and Jesus, etc., to defend themselves. The defense of themselves, I know that people make a lot more out of it in a very crude and simplistic manner, bring it down to a collective, so-called psychological or spiritual level that, well, these great mythical figures or in the Christian idea that uh, Jesus was actually a piece of God, you know, he's not even going to put up with that. He's not going to defend himself. Get past that, it is that, surely all of you sense the reality of it, it is really harmful. And it's the same thing I'm telling you now, just on a different level, is uh, I'm not trying to close up here. I don't particularly, if you do it, you do it, and if you don't, you don't. I'm leaving it to you guys, but don't do that. It's a waste of time. It cannot be done. But uh, what have you got in mind if you're going to try to show some tapes here? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just thinking of the possible scenario that in some way you advertise, and people can come down and see tapes and free beer and a band or something, and they sit, and you give them some idea of what it is, and they sit and they look, look at some tape, and then it's over, and you say, well... You know, everybody likes to stick around, we're going to discuss it, and some of them leave. And you let them go, and some, you know, stay, and you talk for a while, and like, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to just sort of tell them, if not outright, the one thing you should tell them is, you know, you're not speaking for me, that what you're doing is you're just kind of doing, at my behest, I said, get some more people, or I was going to move from Atlanta. And for your own interest, you're trying to get more people. And so you can tell them that much, and say, but what we're going to tell you, besides what you saw on the tape, is just me talking, whoever's standing up here doing it. So that's it. That's it. That's the reason I show up here. That's why I'm talking to you people is I want this to stay here, you know, pointing to me on the tape. Say, but I don't really have anything to say. And I'm not trying to promote that. You just showed some of my tapes and people here and you said, is anybody who wants to hear a little more, you can stick. And some people leave and so some others sit here and you say, well, let me first tell you uh, what I'm saying here tonight is just me talking. He put us up. To, he just said that if we didn't get some more people, he was going to leave Atlanta, and I live here, and I want to stay here, so for my own interest, we're doing this, but he didn't tell us what to say, but this is not a sales pitch, because, you know, you can't be sold to this, we know that, and so and I'm not going to argue it with you, I got none to say, whatever complaint you got against what he said, or whatever complaint you think you got against him, is fine, but I'm not going to defend it, I'm not going to say anything about it, I'm not trying to say you, it's just, you know, we played it for you, and I said we'd stick around and talk about it if you wanted to, but, you know, I'm not going to talk much. You know, are there any questions? You know, such as what time do we meet or, you understand? Is you cannot defend this. You cannot debate it. You cannot do it for absolutely pragmatic reasons because it is the mother of all wastes of time. <laughs> but it's worse than that. It will turn, it will put you not upon the cross of Calvary. It's worse than that. It'll turn you into the loser fighting a George Foreman tar baby. <laughs> You cannot debate this with anybody. Anybody, I'll put it to you another way, literally. Anybody who wants to debate it cannot hear anything. Mm -hmm. Some of this, I guess we had ordinary people, begins to really sound as though it's almost some uh, Zen sliding commentary on people. And it's no excuse, but once you see it, it's an absolute fact, and it explains why this has such a, a limited following. Almost anything else in the world can be increased that's following even it can be increased by some means normally PR work which is a debate almost anything I mean you can come up there's all kinds of groups you hear about them uh, uh, strange sexual groups that suddenly have their own 800 number I'm not going to say some of the things I've heard you make up your own I'm afraid to sometimes bring out some of these because I'm afraid some of you might belong to one of them and I don't <laughs> Anyway, some strange group, some strange group, and you, and you can hear about it and think, God damn, that is horrible. You know, that'll never catch on. And it may seem that way, and if they start off with some hardcore somewhere, pardon the pun, of some group of people, you know, of 50 people, they, will, they can increase the number no matter how unsavory it seems, no matter how yucky, no matter how out of mainstream, by mere debate, which is advertising, PR, you understand. You can this is the only thing that cannot be. And shouldn't even be tried. I mean, absolutely. Because anybody who wants to debate it, and the world's full of people that won't debate it. Which is what all books on mysticism are. That's a debate. It's a part of the continuing debate. But the world is full of people who will debate this. But I give you my absolute word. Anybody who wants to debate this 
will never hear it. They might be fine people. They might hang around and help us sweep the floors and you know, contribute big bucks. By the way, if anybody offers to contribute big money to this <laughs> and they don't seem all that sharp to you, that, that is the one exception. <laughs> if, you, if you can take their money and keep them out of my hair, do it. I'll meet with them once. Meet with them once for a million. Beyond that, it's open to further negotiation. But anybody who wants to debate this, I am telling you, and they can be apparently be reasonable. They can be well read. They can even apparently ask questions that seem like that they heard something. That, well, wait a minute. If they want to debate it, it's a waste of time. Which is the same thing as saying nobody can be converted to this. You can apparently convert somebody. You can apparently whip up a following. You can increase its following. But if you've had, if you do, you've quit doing it. It is impossible to debate. I mean, it's impossible for anybody knows what they're doing because it's worse than a waste of time is what I'm telling you. And some of you should know it. A lot of you have been through it. Little pieces of trying to talk to somebody and either verbally or just with looks. You told me before and I knew it but that you tried to talk to somebody and that you discussed and slept with them for two or three hours in Waffle House or something and then you give me a look. I know the look. I know the, I know the experience. And you give me a look like you know, I thought there's some hope, and when it was over, not only do I think he's not coming, I don't want him to come. And in fact, I went home, and I thought, is it possible to wash out your mouth or brain you know, with lighter fluid or turpentine? Because you understand you shouldn't have done it for your reason. It's got nothing to do with him. But the thing is, it's not just him. Don't worry about the example. Anybody wants to debate this, forget it. You don't have to be in. Just forget it, though. Which is why it's another level what the Socrates and Jesus, or the Jesus story better, he just wouldn't answer. The Socrates story is like another version. The Socrates story is more in line with me staying here telling you why you shouldn't do it, and it's taking me you know, 10 minutes and 20,000 words. That was like Socrates telling them why he's not going to answer. So because you got to remember, he never did actually answer them. Not like they wanted. He said, all right, I know what you want, and let me, let me, let me talk. And they just assumed he was going to go ahead and do this long preface, he was known as a windbag, that he'd get through and go, okay, and then say yes or no. But he went through all that and still didn't say anything. But the Jesus approach is simply, they wanted to debate it. I know it seems otherwise if you were brought up or if you fall, if you were influenced by the spiritual and the religious telling, that it seemed like there was other things involved, but it's all the same thing. You either hear this and you're wired up and that's it. And I say, I said, of course, you can spend 60 years and you never actually get it. Not to give you the blues, but at least you found out, at least you know somewhere that somebody actually knows what it is. It's not like you're out, which some of you, I guess, hoped for originally, that you hoped it was just sort of fooling around. But what the stories like the Jesus represent is, is life wanting to debate it. And actually, it can start off as sounding as though they're on the right track, that there is some basis for this. But if you recall, I worked it in. Some of you did laugh whether you got it or not. That said the reason that a mystic is wasting his time or will not debate an ordinary mind is simply that given all the time in the universe, an ordinary mind won't even come up with the right subject. You understand? That is, no matter what they want to debate, if somebody says, well, I listen to that tape, and by God, I'm ready to join up, I would follow you and him. You're right, around the world. Except, I don't, there's, there's one thing that he doesn't have. Oh, this one thing. You understand what he's done? That's like saying, you know, Jesus or Socrates, defend yourself. They go, nope. Or, are you going to stop what you're doing was a Socrates version of it. Nope. All right, wait a minute. Now everything's open to negotiation. Now I'll stop so-and-so. They got him. But then you're back on the wrong subject. Yeah. Because... To say that a mystic will not debate an ordinary mind because the ordinary mind will never come up with the right subject. Do you understand? No subject's the right subject. It's not like they're stupid. It's whatever the ordinary mind goes. I like this whole idea about mysticism. And Buddha goes, hmm. They go, and I've watched all your tapes. Hmm. Read your works. Hmm. Decide I'd like to follow you probably. Hmm. But let me ask you this one thing. Next. <laughs> And he can say, well, I, everything I've ever heard you say meant so much to me that I feel like I'm on the verge of awakening. Huh. But 
Does, let, me, let me ask you, I want to ask you about this one thing. That's it. In other words, let's debate. But it's just one thing. And you can say, well, wait a minute. He might be had the right subject. There is no right subject. There's none to debate. Somebody say, well, I like a lot of what you say, but some of it I don't like. Well, hey. <laughs> or I like 99% of it. There's just one thing I don't like. Okay. Wait a minute. I think it's all insane except maybe 1%. Okay. You know how well that goes over. That's the same thing I was doing tonight. And they wait well. Yeah. You know, you're surely going to say something. Are those avocados over there right? Yeah. Anyway, that was a, one of my latest. Was a guy, was a guy again at a Kroger store. <laughs> we were actually in the bread department. He gave me all this about, hey, watch me. And he says, well, this guy's even getting better. This one said, uh, you do something out here in Atlanta, that taping, don't you? Yeah. He said, yeah, he said, so we've, he said, I thought I knew that. He said, I, in fact, I've started to come around there sometime. I went, okay. He said, well, he said, you just about got it right. <laughs> <laughs> that was my little thing about the avocados. And then he waited. He bent over. He's standing there next to me. And we're not doing a lot of eye contact because he's just kind of rambling and I didn't stand. And I'm still looking for bread. And he says, See, this was his climactic part. He says, it was this kind of backhanded compliment, but to build himself up too. But a, he's opening up the debate. He says, you just about got it right. You know, just about. And I said, all I could do was say, is that Peter Bread onion or plain over there? Where you? <laughs> because there's nothing to say. You know, he was waiting for me to say, well, what part? Or, well, perhaps I can learn something from him. Doesn't mean the man's not intelligent. Doesn't mean he's a decent family man, especially in a good Kroger store in the bread department. For for him to want to debate, what's the debate about reality? See, they think it's going to be a debate about my system, or we'll discuss mysticism in general. They want to debate reality. What the hell are you going to say? Well, I believe it is onion, Peter Brown. <laughs> uh, well, did I make it clear out of all that? I was going to just tell Worth. I mean, I tell all of you. Worth doesn't have any secret information throughout all this, but I just assumed that he was sort of running the meetings and would pass the word. You can't debate it. I mean, I'm sorry. If you get down desperate, those of you that want to keep this up and it gets down close to the, the deadline, and you still don't have the people, and you think, well, we got some of these people. Let's, and you, let's think back to some of the people that came here and seemed sort of interested, <laughs> that only had minor complaints. <laughs> they, just wanted to, they just wanted to debate. They did, all right, they're like this guy. You figure they must be kin to him because they said, this is almost right. He's almost got it. <laughs> well, I can't resist. Still, the point is, you understand, it is not... A thing between you and other people. This is the example of what I started tonight on the tape. This is what stands between man and another state of consciousness. No matter what it's called. Is you can't get past that point. Of, well, it's almost right. That's like, well, if I keep working on my mind, I'll get more conscious. <laughs> it's an attempted form of autoeroticism, but you're greasing the wrong thing. <laughs> it's a physical person wanting to grease their hand. You've got to grease something else. And to grease something else is not to debate it. There's not to debate. And that's what stands between. That is one of the outstanding descriptions, thank you, of what stands between a man. The actual reality of what stands between an individual. And people that are so close they can smell it that they've listened, let's say in our case, to me so long you feel like, God damn, I'm going to explode sometime. I just know I've almost got everything about it Except there's something, you know, the taste of it, the experience. I just know, which is the dead giveaway, if you want to, just between us, if you don't really know whether you've ever been actually had your consciousness awakened, if you've actually, then you haven't. But that does not mean that you hadn't been so close that the aroma of it almost drives you insane, because that's what keeps people going. That's what keeps people from getting absolutely hypnotized against the glass somewhere between Paris and Istanbul. You just keep thinking, I smell the spices of Turkey. But it seems like I'm going to sit here in the, in the midst of Bulgaria or Romania forever. 
if you smell it, you can get so close, it will keep you alive. And you're on the right track. And yet you know I hadn't had, actually had it. It's not that there's one thing that stops you, but I'm giving you, telling you this is a fine, thank you, verbal example of what it is. The same thing as saying, why don't you people stop killing each other? Or why don't you quit killing and stabbing yourself every day? Because I can't. The mind can't even say that. <coughs> if the mind could say that, <coughs> that has put the mind real close to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And the mind can't even do that. But it's the same thing as you trying to debate it. Not just you and some other person, but trying to talk your mind into and your mind says, wait a minute, some of this is crap. For some of this, he's not right. Hey, none of it's right. What the hell you want? Are you crazy? And your mind goes, well, wait a minute. If he just wouldn't say so-and-so, if he just wouldn't use such and such examples, or contrary, if he would talk more about one area, I believe it would push me over and I would be, aha, allegorically, in the land of awakened Istanbul. If he would only do so and That's a debate. Yeah. You can't do that with yourself. If you do that with yourself, you know what you're doing? You're, it's like you're sitting there in the seat, rocking yourself like, go to sleep, nice old possum. <laughs> it's continually believing, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. It's not that you're not, but to, to get so close that you say, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, that's when the wheels begin to slip. Mm -hmm. That's when they have greased the tracks on you. <laughs> there, you can't debate it. There's nothing to debate. And don't fall for this, which everybody does. That's why I said don't fall for this. Is inside you think, all right, I won't debate you. I won't even debate what you say or anybody else. It's me. It's just me stands in the way. Remember, yeah. you may think, well, this is really getting to a transcendental level or down near. Yeah. What's the difference between that and this guy that's a kleptomaniac or has to wash his feet 400 times a day? And you say, well, won't you stop? Yes, but I'm trying to stop thoughts that seem to be mechanical and repetitious that obviously have got to bar a higher state of consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not the same thing as that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, it's good to debate things sometimes because I just realized that I was wrong. <laughs> I mean, trying, trying to have some willful or affect some willful control over my thoughts or to pair out the ones that are unsavory, the ones that are just mechanical and doing me no good. <laughs> That's not the same thing talking about some nutcase or all right, some guy with a new neurosis that has to wash his feet constantly. I mean, give me a break. Okay. You're right. You're an idiot. There's no difference. So that's the thing. The difference between being more conscious and being out there is everything out there is out there. It's all the same. I thought I'd probably run it in the ground about, I did several things about home exterminators and finally had that Buddha's girlfriend while sweeping out of the bed. I said, what's the big, why do you make this big deal? All roaches look alike to me. Yeah. And he thought without well, saying so that you hit it, my dear. Yeah. That's precisely the point. But if you told ordinary people that, they'd go, what is, what is? <laughs> It just shows. How about another thing? All these dreams about a unified world religion, we already got it. Everybody sins the same. Yeah. Oh, no. No, our group believes such and such is a sin, and our group believes this or this, and this other group believes such and such. Exactly. There's only one valid d division. That's between people who know what's going on and those who don't. That is, you're either over here conscious or you're over there. And over there, it's all roaches. Yeah, but some are better than others. Yeah, over there. In other words, I didn't say that. That came from over there. Over there is a land of reason. Over there is a land of roaches that are better. They're worse, and some that are not so worse. Over there are roaches that are Croats, some who are Serbs, some who ask dumb questions, and some who ask questions that are getting darn close to being insightful. Yes.